rim. You'll see a lot of lobs between the Bethune Cookman Wildcats tonight. On the other side for Howard University and the Bison, what are their keys? They are a great perimeter shooting team. They have the player of the year in R. J. Cole, C.J. Williams, and Chad Lott. Well, let's talk about some of the key players that we can watch for. You talked about the defensive player of the year, Latrell Pope. He's uh, he's done it all for the for the Wildcats this year. And I tell you what, we just looked at the starters that they gave us, and even though we have him down as the key player, for some reason he's not starting tonight. So. But when he gets that may in there, change. But he's <laughs> averaging a double double 14 points and 12 rebounds. So we, we expect to see him. Right. He's not so going to be, be sitting long. No. He may not start, but he's <laughs> going to come off the bench. On the other side, RJ Cole. He's Mr. Everything and just a sophomore. Play of the year. I've seen him play several times. He can score the basketball inside, outside, has a complete package, is the best point guard in the Minnesota Athletic Conference. Well, that should be a well of a ball game. It's Bethune Cookman, Howard University, coming you from the scope in Norfolk, Virginia. It's our last game of the day in this MIAC tournament 2019 version right here on Flow Sports. The DNA of Bethune Cookman comes from the heart of a great woman whose legacy lives on today in each and every Wildcat. I leave you love. I leave you hope. I leave you a thirst for education. I leave you faith. I leave you finally a responsibility to our young people. Great leaders always leave something for others to follow. What will you leave us? Here, we educate tomorrow's leaders today. The Howard Experience allows students to engage in self-exploration through sports, music, dance, and debate. A journey towards excellence in leadership for America and the global community. This is the Howard Experience. The life keeps on going. The MIAC, educating student athletes for the game of life. Along with Cy Alexander, Charlie Neal courtside here as we get ready to tip this one off. The second game of our doubleheader tonight. It's Howard University coming in with a 16-15 record, 10 and 6 in conference play against the Wildcats of Bethune Cookman, 14 and 16, 9 and 7 in the conference. Bethune was picked to finish number one in the preseason poll, but wound up finishing fifth on the other side. Howard was picked to finish fourth in the preseason poll and right where they finished in fourth place. I tell you, a lot of that had to do with Isaiah Bailey getting hurt early in the year. He was obviously the best offensive player for Bethune Cookman. He got to his ACL, has not played all season. When he went down, all of a sudden you go from a first place team to a fifth place team. Also, of course, you got to remember last year they had the player of the year and a young man by the name of Brandon Tad. And he can really, really play. Losing those two guys have, has really affected how the Wildcats have done this year. This is the Wildcat team started the season four and four. And after that, you talked about the injury. They lost five straight. They started the MEAC season three and two, had a three game winning streak at the beginning of February, but uh, struggled a little bit down the stretch. In fact, lost seven conference games. But those seven conference games that they lost this year, Cy, were by a total of 49 points. And I tell you what, they've got to be disciplined in crunch time because they. They're so good athletically, a lot of times they don't play with a lot of discipline. And in crunch games, crunch times, you've got to be disciplined. No question about that. On the other side, Howard University won six of their first nine games. Then they went on a five-game losing streak. But those were non-conference games. So it's not as important as they started the MEAC schedule, four and four. And I wonder how long it'll be before we see Mr. Pope. Yeah. Howard didn't play well at home at all this year. Right. They played better on the road. They were 8-0 in conference games away from home. 2-6 and six at home. That's oh. unbelievable. Away from the firm. Howard University in the white uniforms and R.J. Cole, player of the year, goes to work right away and puts Howard on the board. I'll tell you what, he's got high major skills, does R.J. Cole. 
came out of St. Anthony High School. Of course, Hurley coached up there. I believe the school closed down. Yeah, it did. It did. So quite a fine for coach Kevin Nickelberry to, to be able to get him. It's like the football team has Cam Newton's brother, the quarterback. Right, right. Kalen. One of the top quarterbacks in the Mid Eastern Athletic Conference. On the other side, Bethune Cookman, Ryan Ritter is their head coach in his second year. Doing an outstanding job with that program, rebuilding it. Savyar with the ball in his hands. Here's RJ. Shot clock at seven. Jumper off the back of the iron from Chad Lott with the offensive rebound pulled down by Savior. They still have the ball moving it inside. Strong move by Chad Lott. Third team all conference selection. He's the third wheel of the trivector. RJ Cole, CJ Williams, Chad Lott. That last shot by Chantrez Davis. Wouldn't fall. Davis with the interception that time. Here's Diakiti back outside. Houston Smith inside. Nice easy layup by Chantrez Davis, senior from Atlanta, Georgia. Chantrez likes to play above the rim. They have some elite athletes on this Bethune Cookman Wildcat team. Howard University lost to. This Bethune Cookman team at home as we get the slam by Charles Williams, the junior, first team all conference selection. Two players from Howard University on the first team all conference selection squad. From long range, a three pointer, and that falls for Diakiti. One point ball game, six to five. But how about RJ? He had the answer for you. That's right. Doc Keith, you do it. RJ says I can do it too. 38% from three point range is RJ Cole. Player of the year in the conference. Nice move inside. And that was Sean Trent Davis. And the pace is fast and furious no early doubt, on here. No doubt. Buckle up. Let's get for, ready for this ride. What do you say? You're sitting in your living room, hold on to the popcorn. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> and they're coming right through to you. <laughs> Sit back and enjoy. This foul is going against Malik Maitland, junior out of Daytona Beach. And he is a pure point guard, runs the Wildcats offense, does an excellent job in, in getting the ball to these high major athletes that he has. Second team all conference selection for Malik Maitland. We're going to play a control foul or an offensive foul on Savior. Akwobobu. You've got to maintain your positioning on screens. You've got to be still. And that happens. You see that so often this year. Guys are still moving. And that, that call is made on a consistent basis. Houston Smith and Maitland. And the, and the one thing Howard has done much more this year is play man to man. Down the lane, nice move, just wouldn't fall, and the rebound pulled down by Savio. Long jumper, this one doesn't fall. Defensive rebound, Diakiti. I tell you what, the Howard Bison are going to remind us of the Golden State Warriors. They're going <laughs> to let some threes fly. But Maitland with the three ball. And now Bethune with the one point advantage 10 to 9 early on. And I think I see a Cottrell Pope sighting. He did not start like we said. <laughs> Even though he's the defensive player of the year, RJ turns around and he buries the, the two pointer. Nice little mid range shot that time by RJ. Down the lane goes Diakiti. Daikiti. 
Nice save. Keeping the ball inside. Back outside to Maitland. He'll slow things down. Now he'll take the three short. But they get the offensive rebound. They're going to go on player control on Sufiani. Dakiti out of the Bronx, New York, with Junior. Timeout on the floor. And we have an 11 10 ball game. One point lead for the Bison of Howard over the Wildcats of Bethune Cookman. Educating student athletes for the game of life. Along with Sy Alexander, Charlie Neal here courtside. You talked of earlier, Sy, about Isaiah Bailey being lost to this Bethune Cookman squad. After just three games, he was averaging 14.7 points per contest when he got injured. If you look at their stat sheet now, he's still the leading scorer. <laughs> right. <laughs> and he only played three games. And I, I tell you what, uh, it's hard to lose a guy like that and, and, and maintain your same type of uh, athleticism and ability. Howard University with the one point edge right now. We see Andre Turi has checked into the lineup for Howard University. Wearing number one. Dumps it inside. Jalen Jones just come in too. This is a backcourt violation. One of the things, pass, one of the things Howard is doing really well right now and credit R.J. Cole. Team is shooting 63% from the field, 50% from the three line, and right now Cole is three for three and one for one. That's not bad. No, pretty <laughs> good. Is that an offensive foul? <laughs> that foul goes against Amani Collins. Grad student from San Francisco, California. One three one. Jumped inside the Torre from the corner. There he is. Perfect. RJ Cole with a three ball. Staying perfect. Can't get any better than that. No, can you? he's off to a great start. He had 24 points when they lost to this Bethune Cookman team at home. And he had 32 points when they beat them down in Daytona Beach. Tell you what, when he's clicking like that. He's hard to defend because he has unlimited range. 36 points was a season high, and he did that against the Spartans of Norfolk State, who he's hoping to see again tomorrow. And he hit the game winner with about one second left on the clock, two steps behind the three-point line to win the game for the Bison versus the Spartans of Norfolk State. 98-95 was the final on that one. He had 36 points in that contest, including, as you said, that game winner. And again, Howard University has been a lot more man-to-man -man this year. Normally, Coach Nickelberry has been a zone guy, almost like Jim Beheim. That's a clock, shot clock violation. And that's what I was talking about in the opening. But Thun Cookman has to be more disciplined. That was just a terrible shot that time by Maitland. R.J. Cole, who has been perfect from the field, he has 10 of his team's 14 points. Four for four from the field, two for two from three-point line. Torrey shot, no fall. Nice ex execution that time. Torrey just missed the shot. From the corner, missed everything. The save, inbound by Maitland. And now Wally Parks along with Hope to try to set things up down the lane. Maitland nice too hard. Block. Good block inside. Big hands by Princewell Anasiki. Tried a little lob. Here's the outlet pass. Run down and foul. Score the basket. The nice. foul will be whistled against Jalen Jones and a nice move. Inside and finishing up is Sean Trez Davis. Excellent ball skills, ability to catch the ball, spin, and doing all of this, Charlie, at 6'9. 
Did a great job out of Atlanta, Georgia. A senior. He had nine points, nine rebounds in the first meeting when they won up in Washington, D.C. Can't complete the three, can't complete the three point good. play. And when they went down and he had a double double when they lost to Howard in Daytona Beach, 11 points, 11 rebounds. This is Kyle Foster getting it down low into the hands of Chad Lott. Torrey lost it. Here's the dish off. Tried to slam, and it was nothing there. Houston Smith missed that slam dunk. He was trying to bring the house down. <laughs> no <wasn't> doubt. <laughs> Jones bounce pass down low. Here's Lot. Has it blocked by Wally Parks. Lot again. Put it off the glass. It won't fall. Battle for the loose ball. And it's going to be Howard retaining possession. The athleticism of Bethune Cookman is causing some hesitation by the Howard Bison around that basket. They got to finish strong. 11.56. Yeah, that's the time remaining here. We're in the first half of play. MIAC basketball tournament time on Glow Sports. Always leave something for others to follow. What will you leave us? Eleven fifty six. That's the time we have left here in the first half of play. And Howard University enjoying a two point advantage right now over the Wildcats of Bethune Cookman. And it'll be Howard University inbounding the ball under their own basket. Chad Lott. Redshirt Jr. Third team all conference selection out of Shreveport. Louisiana will inbound the ball for Kevin Nickelberry. RJ Cole is still perfect from the line. He's hot as a firecracker right now, Charlie. He is on fire. The young man play of the year in the Middleton Athletic Conference is trying to be tournament play of the year. Well, who keeps this up? It won't be a problem. Three of three from three point range. He has 13 points in the ball game, and it'll be Howard University's ball. He's putting on the show right now for the fans not, here in Norfolk. And he's not doing it no. like he's forcing anything. He's, he's doing it all within the team offense. And he has the ball in his hands right now. He'll bring it across the timeline against Malik Maitland from Bethune Cookman. Gives it over to Foster. Back out. This shot. Taken by Cousins, no good. Bethune had trouble controlling right. it a little bit. Wally Parks almost lost it. Inside. The give and go and a foul is going to be whistled, which will send Clitrell Pope, the junior out of North Pope, Alabama. And that's who we've been waiting line. to see. Yeah. He is a double double machine, averages 14 points and 12 rebounds. Maybe he was late for shoot around this morning, John. <laughs> Whatever. There he goes. Missed the free throw, though. <laughs> Missed them both, but gets the rebound. Loses his balance. And Cole is fouled. By Wally Parks. You cannot leave freebies at the line, Mr. Pope. Howard sneaking out to a five point lead with 11 minutes to go. First half from the scope here in Norfolk. And it's going to be Howard's ball. Off of the hands of one of the Bethune Cookman defenders. This Bethune Cookman team was averaging 74 points a game. Howard 79 points a game. They led the conference in scoring, and you see why with the play of travel is going to be the call and the turnover. Akubovo 
shuffled his feet. Savio. The savior. The savior. I was going to say, you see why Miak leading scoring team was Howard University. Right, no doubt. They got three great perimeter players in Locke, Williams, and I'm saving the best for last, R.J. Cole. And Cole, of course, led the conference in scoring also. Down the lane, there's the drive, blocked away by inside. Big hands by Zion Cousins to knock that one away. The dish off from Cole and it's buried by Charles Williams. That's great teamwork. Oh, not no doubt. Nice transition outfit. Shot it in rhythm. And there again, it talks about the unselfishness of Cole because he could have very well taken that shot, but he decided to give it to his teammate. Meanwhile, at the other end, Quintrell Pope, the defensive player of the year, decides he's got some offense too. <laughs> right. They want to show you guys something. <laughs> Over the years, and you coached there as an assistant many years as Savior Akubovo comes out with a basket. As an assistant to A.B. Williamson, you saw a lot of great players come through Howard University over the years. Guys like Larry Spriggs and Kyle Williams. The, that's the first miss. It was a, tried to be a little layup by R.J. Cole. The pull-up jumper, that's going to be short. And talking about our 1981 team was the first HBCU. He didn't miss that one. And he used it, his right hand that time. <laughs> he is putting on an offensive exhibition. Nine-point lead. For Howard University with 9.02 to go. And RJ Cole, six of seven from the field, perfect from three point land. And he has 16, 15 points on the board. He has more points than the opposition. I tell right you now. what, he's putting on the show <laughs> six of seven, two assists, two rebounds, three for three from long distance. Our officials for tonight's game is Wade Crawford, Everett Summers, Manny Upton. Of course, Manny Upton, the father of the Upton boys in Major League Baseball. Saw them when they were playing with the Atlanta Braves. Maitland down the lane has it taken away. Ahead. And a foul is going to be whistled against the Akiti. This Howard is off to a great start offensively. They're shooting 55% from the field, 50% from the three line. A lot of that has to do with the play of R.J. Cole, MEAC Player of the Year. Charles Williams going to the free throw line. 6'6 junior out of Richmond, Virginia, went to Millwood School. 86% free throw shooter. Second. Number two in scoring in the conference, right behind his teammate, R.J. Cole. I tell you what, uh, he's not a bad number two. Second in the conference in free throw percentage. That deep range shoots a high arcing jump shot. Didn't look good on that one. He had 11 points in the first time these two teams met in Washington, D.C. In the game that they lost, but he had 20 down in Daytona Beach when they beat Bethune Cookman on the road. And we see the trail Pope is now on the bench again. Looks like he might have got poked in the eye. From the corner, three ball, no good. Battle around, and Howard comes up with it. R.J. Cole, player of the year in the conference, down the lane, dishes off, good vision, missed though. You gotta finish those, Zion Cousins. 
Maitland reverse no won't fall. Chad Lott brings it into front court for Kevin Nickelbury in his 12th year. Travel is the call a turnover. Nickelberry out of Virginia Wesleyan. He spent three years as the head coach at Hampton University back in 06 and 09. He replaced Gil Jackson at Howard University as the head coach there. Nick was an assistant for two years at UNC Charlotte, three years at Clemson. Yes. We'll be back with more with eight minutes to go and a 10 point lead for Howard. Eight minutes left before intermission here at the scope in Norfolk, Virginia, and a 10 point advantage for the Bison of Howard University. We talked about Ryan Ritter, who's the head coach over Bethune Cookman in his second year, a graduate of Emory Riddle University. He played for his dad, 2008, Steve at uh, Emory Riddle, and is a, was an assistant coach there at Emory Riddle before taking over the head spot at Bethune Cookman. And you talk to Len Thompson, the athletic director at Bethune Cookman. He's been knowing him since he was a little kid. Right, right. Grew up right around the Bethune Cookman campus. And Howard went to a box and won that last time. And Chantrez Davis buried the three. Pull the team within seven. 7.34 to go. We talk about some great coaches down in Daytona Beach. That one by C.J. Williams is short. But they get it back. First three missed by R.J. Cole. In and out of the hands of Chantrez Davis. Here comes Bethune Cookman. Blocked inside. Big man just put his hand up there, and that was Prince Anasiki. Got a block party going on here. And a block, and we're going to shoot two. And it's still block party. <laughs> <laughs> and it appears as if Clintrell Pope is having some real vision difficulties. I guess when you get your shot blocked, Charlie, you can't just can't see. Can't see very well. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he is. Yeah, he's he's going to the sideline right, right now, and uh, Wally Parks is going to come in and replace him. So Cole, one field goal miss, one three-point miss, and still leading everybody in scoring with 15 points. You got Chad Locke, who was third team All-Conference, and he he's not a, a bad answer as that as your third. Field goal option. 68% free throw shooter. Team's number three score. Redshirt Jr. from Freeport, Louisiana, product of Rice High there. Missed three games in late December, but did score 14 points in the first meeting against the Spathoon Cookman squad and five in the second when he's one for two at the line. That was flat. 25 17, eight point game. Still sticking with the 1 3 1. Cole across the lot. Back to Cole. Cole trying to get to a spot. Dumps it inside. And it's on a sicky. Has it knocked away? The pull up jumper won't fall. That's time for Bethay. Raymond Bethay Jr., freshman out of Atlantic City, New Jersey. Spin in the lane, a nice move. Basket by Houston Smith, Jr. out of Columbus, Ohio. Nice spin that time. Way to attack the basket. Houston Smith is sticking with the 1 3 1, trying to throw the bison off rhythm. Under six to go. All the way across to RJ Cole. Down low. The three ball doesn't fall. And a, out of bounds. Zion Cousins couldn't get it to go. So we have a couple substitutions coming into the Howard University lineup right now. Jalen Jones checks back in as a Sev York. Michael Woville 
Back in the lineup, working down low defensively. Chantrez Davis was trying to post him up there. Battle for the loose ball, and it comes down to Houston Smith. Smith down the lane, pulls up, shot, no good. Boards cleared by Cousins. Scored a basket. They call goaltending. Nice pass that time by R.J. Coder to Raymond Bethay Jr. Went up, and tried to tip it in, and uh, you see, I think Patrell Pope is now sitting near the coach, so he may be about ready to come back in. He's up, going to the scores yep. table. Great defense by the Bison. And another turnover for Bethune Cookman, who averaged just about 16 turnovers a contest. Howard University did a better job of protecting the ball throughout the season. Only 12.4 turnovers per game. And, and that's what happens when you have a stellar point guard. You keep the ball in his hands, let him make the, the right decisions, let him make the play, whether the play is for him to take the shot or the play is. You know, he reminds me a little bit of a poor man's James Harden from the Houston Rockets. He's got, he got range, a beard. And he got a beard too. You know, maybe that's it. I thought it was because he was left handed and he could shoot, but maybe it's just because he's got a beard. <laughs> Howard won four MEAC tournaments. The last one was 1992. That was also the last time they won a regular season title. And I tell you, one of his Achilles heels has been his inability to make free throws down the clutch. And he, they lost several games this year because he's at the line to close it out. And for whatever reason, he, he missed. And he's an 82% free throw shooter. He hits both of them that time. Shot looks really good right now. And gives his team a 10 point advantage, equaling their biggest lead of the night 29 19 with 4.45 to go. First half. Wally Parks. Pope down the lane. Pope. A lot of contact down there, and they got a call going the other way. Coach Ritter takes the coat off. That foul is going against Pope, the junior out of Northport, Alabama. He, he didn't think that Pope should have been called for that foul. He didn't really think he went over his back. He thought he used his athleticism to go get it, but uh, Craig Crawford saw it something, saw something different. 18 yeah. fouls against Bethune, only three against Howard here in the first half. And coaches, look at that. And that's huge. That's huge. Savior at the free throw line hits the front end of the one and one for the 64% free throw shooter. This is their biggest lead of the night with 433 to go. An 11 point advantage. And he makes them both. Howard setting up down a 1-1-3 one, one, zone. It'll turn into a flatten out into a 2-3. Houston Smith tried to get it down low. RJ Cole picked his pocket. Cole is averaging 1.6 steals per contest. Nice little mid-range shot that time by Cousins. Just missed it. Triple team out there on the corner on Santrez Davis. Coach is all the way out at midcourt. Wants to talk to the referee. Because as long as there are battles, there will always be Marines. Back in the scope in Norfolk, Virginia, where the Howard University Bison enjoying their biggest lead of the night over the Wildcats of Bethune Cookman, a 12 point advantage. 
with four make it 355 exactly left in the first half of play along with Cy Alexander a former assistant coach at Howard former head coach at South Carolina State I'm Charlie Neal glad you could join us here on flow sports for exciting MIAC basketball it's tournament time and to turn around by Savio uh, Pope I should say just wouldn't fall and he's going to go to the line for two part of the reason Charlie that the Bisons have this lead is Bethune Cookman they have 12 turnovers in the first half and I know that coach really is not pleased with that they've got to take care of the basketball and that's what I was talking about earlier in our opening about them being disciplined they got big time athletes but sometimes they don't play within themselves they try to do more than they're capable of doing when you talk about those 12 turnovers have translated into 10 points for Howard University exactly and they have a little above the 10 point lead. Hope second free throw does go for him. 349 to go. RJ Cole will walk it up. RJ just a sophomore. Down the lane all the way the floater doesn't go. And the rebound by Pope. Driving inside Diakiti. Back across court to Collins down low. Pope has it, holding it high. He's going to drive inside, loses it, puts it up, and he's going to be a foul. And they're going to call that foul on Savior. So Pope going back to the free throw line, where he was one for two his last trip there. Got a chance to cut it to sing single digits in the last three minutes. This is his fifth free throw attempt tonight he's only made one and if I'm coach Ritter I'm going to stick with this one three one zone because it, it uh, what it does it keeps Howard from really ex executing their half court offense because now basically they got to try to play around the one three one and they got great length with uh, Pope at the top of that zone. Savior will go to the bench. He has two personal fouls right now. They don't want him to pick up his third before halftime. He's replaced by Andre Torre, a freshman out of Paris, France, in the lineup. Wearing number one, 305 to go to drive down the lane back out to RJ Cole. Three minutes to go. Wide open underneath. Just a little bit too hard. Just didn't fall that time for Chad Lott. He had the clean look. Taken away. Torre had his hands in there. RJ Cole close to coast. Back out to Cole. Not forcing anything. Torre. Baseline jumper. No good. Off the hands of Charles C.J. Williams. See, that's, and what another that, that's what I'm talking about right there. Torre. He missed. They're missing chip shots. That is Howard University. Bethune does not play with any discipline. They could be a much better team if they had a little more offensive discipline. Had two big turnovers. And Howard's a little more disciplined. They just missed chip shots. Right. They just missed the shots. These guys are throwing just just throwing stuff that really make to me. Offense. They're a team that is very talented with athletes, but they're undisciplined in the way they play. So player control foul against Pope. Substitution into the Howard lineup. Torre will go to the sideline. Good minutes there for Coach Kevin Nickelberry, Jalen Jones. Redshirt senior from Kinston, North Carolina, will come back in. Did not play when they played down in Daytona Beach against the Wildcats, but did play the first meeting. Had three points. And a foul is going to be whistled. 
and the Bison doing an excellent job right now in attacking the one three one you hit high high post turns and looks to the opposite low block that time they got it down to Jalen Jones. Jones he's going to the free throw line. Daikiti picked up the personal foul. Couldn't a see his number. Right. A minute 36 is the time remaining. Jones misses the free throw. He's two for 24 at the free throw line this year. So they don't even have a, a percentage for that. It's psychological. Look, he made that one. And that, and that, one, count. that one didn't count. Anasiki in the lineup for Howard University right now. Replacing C.J. Williams. He did make the second one. That's a big deal for, for Jalen. It is. He smacked himself in the chest. I got it done. I said two for 24. Let me correct it. It wasn't that bad. It was 12 for 24. Somehow that one goes in, maybe credit the basket to Wally Parks. Again, that athleticism. And I, I just wish this Bethune team was just a little more disciplined within the, how they play because they got talent, but they don't play very smart. This off. C.J. Williams about to come back in. So far today, he's uh, five points, two for six, 0 for one from the three. And he'll replace Jalen Jones, the redshirt senior out of Kenston, North Carolina. Under a minute to go before halftime. An 11 point lead for Howard University. Uh, correction, make that a nine, uh, nine point lead for Howard University. And now the tip in that time by Zion Cousins. Nice. Follow offensive rebound by Zion Cousins. Nice tip in. Now it's an 11 point lead for the Bison with 46 seconds to go before the break. It's been all Howard University since the outset. They've led by as many as 12 points. In this game, they led by 12 with 433 to go. This Bethune Cookman team has never won a MEAC tournament. They've been in the championship game. In fact, the last time they were there was 2012 when they lost to. Norfolk State and hoping to get an opportunity to knock off those Spartans tomorrow, but they're going to have to get by this Howard University team here today. Right. Manny Upton with the call. Nice drive that time by Maitland. Created the foul situation. Andre Torre, the young man out of Paris, France. And Maitland at the line, an 86% free throw shooter. And that's his fourth point of the night. First free throw attempt. For the young man, he's averaging 13.7 points per contest. He's a big right here. And if the Wildcats can get one more stop, they'll have 10 seconds to try to get another shot. They've cut it to nine. 30 seconds left. Seven second difference between the game and shot clock. Cole. Little give and go. Nice runner. And finished by Jalen Jones. Good hands, good finish. Let's see if Maitland can get something going before the break. Four seconds on the clock. And that's going to be the end of the first half of play. 
36 on the board for the Bison of Howard University 25 for the Wildcats of Bethune Cookman an 11 point advantage at the break. We'll be back with our halftime activities in just a moment. Howard experience. We're at halftime of our quarterfinal action, 36-25, and it's Bethune-Cookman trailing the Bison of Howard University. We're at halftime, and I'm joined here by Mar Markeisha Taylor from Home Depot. She's a pro project manager for marketing based in Atlanta, Georgia. Yep. Welcome to Norfolk. First of all, tell us a little <laughs> bit about your company and Home Depot. We know what Home Depot basically does, and but how does it set you apart from some of the, your competitors? Yes, thank you. Um, nice having me here. Um, so the Home Depot is it's the world's largest home improvement retailer, uh, specialty retailer. We are basically located all across the country. Um, you'll find us in all 50 states, um, the U.S. territories, Guam, uh, USBI, Mexico, Canada. We're everywhere. And what sets us apart is that we are basically... Um, um, the authority, the know-how for home improvement. Um, so we're here to help all of our consumers day in and day out, um, all the pros, the DIYers, get started on those projects that they have um, and make sure that we can get you started, get you completed in those projects. And then, um, you know, more importantly, why I'm here today is to represent uh, the Retool Your School program with the Home Depot. It's a campus improvement uh, grant program for HBCU, so we're definitely happy to be here for MEAC today. Well, I was going to say, why do you feel it's important to, yep. to partner with the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference? We feel it's important, uh, definitely uh, because of MEAC's history um, and their continued support for HBCUs. This is why we are um, driven every day um, at the Home Depot with the Retool Your School program. Annually, we're giving uh, grants to HBCUs to improve their campuses, and this year marks our 10th anniversary. We're um, going bigger than ever. Uh, we're 10 years in strong, and we're granting uh, $500,000 total this year to HBCUs. Well, that's great. I mean, you know, and everyone will tell you, if you talk to presidents, athletic directors, yep. that HBCUs are always, can always use some financial, uh, some financial assistance. And yes. it's great that you're able to do that. We're really excited. So that's $50,000 to 10 schools this year. Well, that's great. Have you had a chance to participate in some of the other events going on around the tournament? I have not just yet, but I'm really enthused about everything going on. I just arrived a few hours ago here <laughs> rallying everybody as they come in. Get excited. Vote for your favorite HBCU at retoolyourschool.com. You can vote continuously as many times as you want through April 15th um, and also through social media. This is March Madness, as they talk about it. Yep. I don't know how much of a sports fan you are <laughs> on your side of the business, but what does March Madness mean to Home Depot? March Madness is really all about preparing for the spring. So, you know, there are certain things that you can't do while it's, you know, post-holiday. You're waiting for that nice weather. You want to get outdoors. So we're going to make sure that we always have that right product offering when you need it to get started with um, anything from lawn care to renovation products indoor with paint. So we're just getting excited and getting ready, getting our store set for the springtime. Well, it's a great honor for you to be here and a pleasure to have a chance to spend some time with you. And we thank Home Depot for their support of HBCUs yep. and the MEAC in particular. And we thank you for being here with us at halftime. Markeisha Taylor from Home Depot, project manager for marketing. And she's based in Atlanta. The stores are all over the place. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back with more of our halftime activities from the Scope and Norfolk. It's MEAC basketball, and it's the 2019 tournament quarterfinal action where Howard University is enjoying an 11-point lead at halftime. One. Thirty-six twenty-five. Our score here at halftime at the Scope in Norfolk. Bethune Cookman with an eleven-point lead over the Wildcats of Bethune Cookman, thanks to a seventeen-point first half performance by R.J. Cole, the MEAC Player of the Year. He also has four assists. Back with more from the Scope in a moment.
back here at the scope in Atlanta uh, at, at, at Norfolk. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm dreaming. Yeah, right. It's late. 36 <laughs> 25. We're in Norfolk, Virginia. Is our score at halftime? Howard University with an 11 point advantage as we get ready to start the second half. Checking out some of the highlights of the first half. Basically, it's been RJ Cole, the player of the year offensively for Howard University. And what a show he's put on 17 points. And not only the 17 points, but four assists. I tell you what, and he was doing it, Charlie, what I like in within the flow of the offense. He, he wasn't trying to be a ball haul. He was passing the ball, giving it up. I just thought he had an outstanding first half. He played like he was the Minnesota Athletic Conference Player of the Year. Sean Trez Davis led the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats in scoring with nine points. He also was able to grab five rebounds. He also got some help from Wally Parks, who grabbed uh, five rebounds. And you have the player defensively of the year as Clatrell Pope. He has six rebounds and four points. But the most important stat I think what we've seen in the first half is the fact that 15 turnovers for Bethune-Cookman and Howard University able to convert them into 11 points. And the fact that the Akante has four fouls. That means he's got to sit, and he's a big clog in the Wildcats scheme of things. He may have to sit for 10 minutes before Coach Ritter can bring him back in. And he's a, he was a starter. Let's see what Coach Ritter does. In fact, with his second half starting lineup, as you said, Diakiti is not in the lineup to Pope start the second now. half. But Pope, who did not start right, the game, right. is in the lineup for the Wildcats of Bethune-Cookman. And let's see if he's having any issues with his eyesight because I think he was poked in the eye. Looked like they were trying to get his uh, contact lenses corrected or what have you. Houston Smith. Chantrez Davis will inbound the ball to start the second half for the Wildcats of Bethune-Cookman. Also in the lineup, Armani Collins. So everybody starting that started the game with the exception of Diakati. Maitland is the point guard. He'll bring it across the timeline. Starting the second half with an 11-point advantage for Howard University. Knocked away. R.J. Cole had his hand on it, and it is batted away, and it's in the hands of R.J. Cole. Dishes off to C.J. Williams, and that is good. They were trying to get goaltending on the defense that time down the floor. And that's not the way you want to start the second half when you're chilling if you're the Wildcats. And this is because their biggest lead is a 13-point advantage. And again, the, the Wildcats have elite athleticism. They just got to figure out how to use it correctly. Savior, Makwovu, at picks up the personal foul. And it's Houston Smith at the line right now for Bethune-Cookman. First shot is good. Look for the one three one half court trap by the Wildcats. Misses the second one and he has three points. There's the one three one. The pull-up jumper off the back of the iron. Strong rebound by Chantrez Davis. Houston Smith all the way and for two. Nice read that time by Houston Smith. He allowed the, the backline lane to open up. Saw when it opened up, he attacked. One, three, one again. I would stick with it if I'm Coach Ritter. They got to get their hands up, though. You got to be big. They're playing lazy defense right now. All hands are down. You got to get your hands up. C.J. Cole, the three. In and out with the follow. By Charles C.J. Williams. Nice athleticism by C.J. Williams. Not only can he shoot the threes, but he can jump. He sure can. He was up there. No doubt. That ball looked like it was... Well on its way going in originally from the corner. The three ball too hard. 
for Collins. And inside to Cottrell Pope. Cottrell Pope with the feed. And now Bethune Cookman starting to feel like they have some momentum now. You got to play big. They got to get the hands up in the 1 3 1 zone. Make the trap. They got a call of hell ball player. It's actually Howard's ball. It'll be Howard retaining possession on the hell ball. Kevin Nickelberry calling out the plays. Puts C.J. Williams way in the far corner. He comes in to R.J. Cole. Bounce pass the pull up jumper down the lane in and out for Zion Cousins. And a foul is going to be whistled against R.J. Cole, which will send Houston Smith, the junior out of Columbus, Ohio, after Centric High to the free throw line. No, actually, he's getting it out of bounds. Oh, there was not a shooting yeah, foul. Okay. And they called it out of bounds. I mean, called it on the floor. Just to inbound it. It will be Chantrez Davis comes in to Pope. Defensive player of the year. High pass across the lane. There's Pope inside. Off the glass. That looked like that was touched offensively. Right, right. <laughs> it looked like it may have been brought out because of that. Battle underneath and Pope comes down with the ball. Knocked away and it comes off of the hands of Zion Cousins. Bethune will maintain possession. Again, Chantrez Davis to inbound the ball. For Coach Ryan Ritter. Torrey in the lineup along with R.J. Cole. And Zion Cousins, and we got a turnover on a travel. Sticking with the 1 3 1. See if you can keep the Bison off rhythm offensively. But you've got your trailing. You've got to take advantage of turnovers and missed shots that the Bison are having. RJ, who started out on fire. There's CJ. And a nice move by Chantrez Davis. He's got some nice ball skills to be 6'9. I thought CJ was going to try to take a charge that time. Eight point game. It was 11 points at halftime. Howard with the lead. Torrey runs down the loose ball in the corner. Baseline jumper. And it's good for C.J. Williams. He really feels comfortable along that baseline. Either side does C.J. Williams. Got a nice high arcing stroke. Long jumper. The three ball falls for Houston Smith. A 50, uh, a 32% three-point shooter. In the two games that these two teams played, Houston Smith had a total of three points. Well, he just reached his total just then. Yes, he did. He has eight points in this game. Here comes Maitland into the front court. Maitland. Battle on the floor. Put back. No basket. Technical foul they just called. Who did he call a technical foul? Well, on? I don't know. I'm not sure who the technical was on. But it might have been on the bench. Not sure. I'd like to see that replay.
Good to see you in the moment. Shout out to the president of 19. Give him a round of applause. Round of applause all the couples. We love the Lord out here. We didn't get an explanation as to really what happened that time. He scored, and official came out and looked. Well, they, they this forty-two thirty-five is our score, <laughs> and it's going to be Bethune Cookman maintaining possession. It's a seven-point game. We're still not sure what happened that time down there. Now there's a timeout on the floor. With 15 14 to go. I know a basket was taken away from Bethune. Yeah, but, they, but they couldn't have been. They got a seven point. It's a seven point game. But we'll then they back. scored. He said no. And he. We'll be back. We'll figure it out. Here, we educate tomorrow's leaders today. The Howard Experience allows students to engage in self-exploration through sports, music, Fifteen, fourteen to go. We got an explanation. There was no foul. It was not a technical. What they were checking to make sure what happened was the ball was on the floor, and coach called the timeout. So it is a seven-point ball game. But Thune Cookman still in there. Down the lane, off the glass for two is Houston Smith. Houston Smith is coming alive for the Thune Cookman Wildcats. Five-point game. But at the other end, C.J. Smith, or well, C.J. Williams, correction, buries the three. Scored a basket. And this is Wally Parks off the bench. Nice drive by through. Parks. They had poor communication on the defensive end. On by that Bethune. last, that, yes. And leaving a Charles Williams open like that. Nobody picked him up. He got a nice little mid-range jump shot. Make this free throw. We we're talking about a, a five-point game once again. It was an 11-point lead for Howard at halftime, 36-25. They led by as many as 13 here in the second half. But have been outscored in the second half. Forty-five, forty. Fifteen to nine run for this Bethune Cookman team. They're right back in it with five minutes to go. Anybody's ball game. Howard at one point in time, especially in the first half. Looked like they were going to run away with it. Almost a turnover. It is a turnover. And Bethune coming back with it. They're playing some good defense. And Daikiti in the lineup playing with four personal fouls. That one's blocked inside by Savior. Williams, he couldn't he couldn't get it. They were trying a little alley-oop to him. Down the lane. Pull it off the glass for two. And that's Daikiti with four fouls. And now... And he's Kevin taking a big chance was. to have him back in the ball game yeah. with four fouls. Oh, well, Nickelberry calls a timeout. His team seeing that big lead of 13 dwindled all the way down to three right now. 45-42. And that's coming with 13-51 to go. And that last defensive sequence the Wildcats actually had switched to a box in one putting parks on RJ Cole just trying to completely take him away and make the other four guys win the ball game
13 51 to go Charlie Neal along with Sy Alexander here at the scope in Norfolk Virginia for the Miac basketball tournament. We're on flow sports glad you could join us for this one but it's been a pretty good game off the glass no good too hard for Zion Cousins sophomore from Upper Marlboro couldn't get it to go. You remember dear Kitty he's back in the lineup but he's proven his worth since coming back in even though he's playing with four personal fouls. He's got to be careful Maitland's three no good. Boards cleared by CJ Williams. CJ in the front court. CJ a little shake and bake right now. One of the things we've noticed is RJ Cole has been kind of quiet here in the second half. Wide open down the lane. They opened the floodgates for him that time, didn't they? And he took CJ advantage Williams. of it. Yes, CJ did. Williams exploded to the rim. RJ Cole with 17 points. He has not scored here in the second half. He had all those 17 right. points in the first half, has not scored in the second half. So what what was the difference in what they've gone to a box in one. They okay. told totally denying him. Parks, that's his job, right? He has one job and one job only. Don't let RJ Cole touch the basketball. So the player of the year who was on fire in the first half, not been able to score here in the second half. Knocked away. Good defensive play by Cousins. Here's RJ Cole now going up and he's going to the line. Maitland picks up the foul. Maitland thought he had a steal. He could take this lead right back up to seven if he can make two. And so far tonight, he is two for two from the line. We talked about his free throw shooting woes in the at, clutch at points right. in this contest. Hasn't gotten to that point right no, now. No, but it's, it's still it's too much time left. <laughs> if it was 33 right, seconds, right, it might have made a difference. Right, <laughs> it's 12:33. <right. laughs> and he hits them both. And it's a 49-42 lead by Howard University. Seven-point advantage. So after Bethune pulled it within three, it's been a four-nothing run right. for the Bison. Get it back up to seven. Couple questionable shots by Malik Maitland. Maitland dishes off. Collins short and that's going to be a foul that may be five on Diane Kitty he went over the back that that's time it. of RJ Cole that's it that's a that's a again that's five on him every coach has his own philosophy but it's a lot different from mine I think that one he shouldn't have been out there after he had three in the first half and definitely shouldn't have come back this early in the second half, it, it uh, took a big gamble, and the gamble did not uh, pay off for Coach Ritter. So he finishes with just five points and three rebounds. Nice. Steal and move by Wally Parks. He must be a pretty good defensive player because they put him on RJ Cole. And another turnover for Howard University. And now there's a timeout on the floor. 11.59. That's the time remaining. Howard University with a five-point advantage for this Bethune-Cookman squad. They're not going away. Right, they're not. They're too athletic. Every Marine that answers a nation's call. Battles won. Along with Sy Alexander, Charlie Neal here at the Scope in Norfolk, Virginia. MIAC Basketball 2019 and it's tournament time. The winner of this contest goes on to play Norfolk State tomorrow right here at the Scope. 
in Norfolk Virginia at 6 p.m. When these two teams or either one of these teams met Norfolk during the regular season Bethune split with them winning on the road 75 68 losing it uh, losing on the road I should say and winning at home 84 76 Howard also split with Norfolk State during the regular season so Norfolk State has history with both of these squads this year right 11 35 remaining in a six point ball game shot clock under 10 right now CJ Williams short RJ Cole with the loose ball rebound you got to get loose balls when you're trying to come back. You got to have all out effort. Every play, every possession. Torre goes inside, has it taken away by Maitland. Maitland in the front court, all the way, puts it up, he's fouled. He'll go to the line and one. Again, the athleticism that the Wildcats are showing, it's second to none as far as the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference is concerned. They have athletes at every position. Again, if they just play a little more disciplined, like that last time they tried to throw a backside lob, if Santrez, I mean, Cottrell Pope goes up with two hands, maybe he catches it, only went up with one hand. You got to be disciplined in everything that you do. So Maitland with seven points. Perfect at the free throw line tonight, an 86% free throw shooter, ranked third in the conference in that department, and an attempt to make this a two point ball game, 49 46. And he does. 49 47. Two point game. T.J. Williams, under 11 minutes to go, puts it on the floor, puts it off, no good, and a Toure with the tap in. With a little help from Bethune Cookman. He did. See again, that, that's. You don't need that. You don't need that. You... That was Wally Parks with that Aaron shot. C.J. Cole make that R.J. Cole. Looking for Buddy Cousins. Reverse layup doesn't fall that time. Not a good shot by Chad. Lott. Right, right. Maitland over to Davis. Chantrez Davis can't get it to go. Two bad shots. In my opinion, by the Wildcats. RJ Cole pulls up, it's good. And see, so you're down two. Now you're down six. Six. Just that quick. Because of ill advised shots on the offensive end. 53 47. Maitland again. Throws it way up there. The tip in. You see, that's what they need to be doing. Taking the ball to the rack, using their athleticism. Collins. Is hurt. And we got a slam at the other end. A lot. Collins. He's got a cramp. cramp. I, he was the one to put that tip in. in that gave him that uh, last basket down the other end. So they're going to attend to him. 9.26 to go. And a six point ball game. 55 49. That's Armani Collins. He's out of San Francisco. Grad student, six foot six. And he's going to go over to the sideline and try to fix some of that, put some of that, don't hurt no more right. on him. <laughs> It'll be Howard. On defense, because they scored the last time down. So Bethune will inbound the ball. 926 is the time. It's 
still some moisture on the floor and just to protect the players interest. They want to get it right. No doubt. No doubt. Too important. You know we talk about some of the famous players that played or former stars that played at Bethune Cookman. Remember guys like Adrian Coleman. In 2012 CJ Reed who was the right the son, son of, of the Cliff of Reed Cliff who's now Reed, exactly. the head coach over at the University of Maryland Eastern Shore played for his dad at Bethune Cookman when he was the coach career. there. Yeah Antonio Webb and Richard Tucson Freddie Cole Freddie Cole Reggie Cunningham they had some great names over the past and of course can't forget Simon McLaren the dean of them all as far as coaches are concerned 905 to go. Nine seconds on the side clock. Maitland. Maitland driving inside. Puts it up. Blocked. But recovered. Back of the iron. New shot clock for the Wildcats. Wally Parks ran it down inside. Back outside to Wally Parks. He gets the long rebound. The offensive foul. Yes. Nice defense that time. By Zion Cousins took the charge. Right place, right time. Eight forty-one to go. Still a six-point lead for Howard University. They led by eleven at halftime, as many as thirteen in the second half. But Coach Ritter has his team playing a whole lot better. Here in the second half than they were in the first. Let's tell you what. Let's see who can be the most disciplined. Team. And exactly down the stretch. That's who's going to win this ball game. But though Cookman has the athletic ability to do it. I'm just not sure they have enough discipline. I've been saying it beating the dead horse into the ground. But I mean this is what I, I have to call what I see. They got some high major athletes. Some high flyers. They can play. Maitland, he's no slouch. The right, junior right, point guard. Them. Houston Smith started 26 games for Coach Ritter this year. Jalen Jones is in the lineup right now for Howard University. CJ Cole trying to get the ball in his hands. He's being defended pretty well by right. Pope right now. They put a they put some height on, on, on Cole. Pope comes in at 6'9. RJ is at 6'1. Right. And he was guarding him out high. That says a lot about his ability to move his feet. You remember when we talked about the fact that Pope is guarding him? He was the defensive player of the year. He just took that ball and somebody took it away from him. <laughs> Taken away by Chad Lott. R.J. Cole. Good screen by Cousins. And the defensive player ran into the screen and created the contact. Four team fouls against Bethune Cookman, five against Howard. And 7.56 is the time remaining here. Our nightcap from Norfolk, Virginia. Back with more in a moment. The MEAC. Educating student athletes for the game of life. Just under eight minutes to go here at the scope in Norfolk. Our nightcap of this quarterfinal action between Howard University and Bethune Cookman University. The winner plays Norfolk State tomorrow, right here at 6 p.m. Not a lot of recovery time. You, you get home, back to your hotel. 11 11 30. Kind of North Carolina Central will play the nightcap tomorrow against a &T, right? North Carolina AT. Should be a bond burner. And state rivals. That was like the game between Bethune, a uh, correction for between Morgan and Coppin State the other night. <laughs> Wide open, the jumper is good. That's a two pointer for Chad Lott. Nice ball reversal. Good shot preparation. Nice follow through by Lott. The third team all conference selection. Eight point ball game. 
Houston Smith seemed like they're trying to set up things more a little more than they that run and gun right, offense that right. they were running earlier. Here's Maitland down the lane pull back jumper high arc and it's no good. Rebound Chad Lott who just scored the last time down. Jalen Jones with the ball in his hands. Almost a steal that time. Back outside. Howard playing dangerous, aren't they? Struggling with the pass. From the corner. Three ball falls for Raymond Buffay Jr., the freshman. Nice ball movement that time by the bison. Now that lead is back up to 11. 11. But now it's down to eight with that jumper by Clitrell Pope. Not only can he play defense, play some offense too, can he? Trying to direct his teammates to put him in the right positions defensively. 60 to 52. The turnaround in and out for Chad Lott. Maitland down low. Offensive foul. <laughs> I don't even know what to say anymore. Sean Trez Davis, do you agree with it? What was that? Yeah, I think it was a, uh, it was a charge. But my point is, you just turn and you overemphasize that the referee's got to call it. Be a little more poised and a little more disciplined, Bethune, and you could walk away with the Middleton Athletic Conference Tournament Championship because you definitely got the players. Down low, and it's going to stay Howard Ball under their own basket, but only 10 seconds remaining on the shot clock. Big defensive sequence for 10 seconds, Bethune. Can you play defense? Howard, can you be poised to get a good shot? Try to run R.J. Cole off some baseline screens. Five thirty-three remaining in the contest. Bethune down by eight. The three ball is good again from Raymond Buffay. 63-52. The lead is back to 11. Chantrez Davis across to Maitland. Maitland spinning. Nice dish off. And Polk finishes. Nice dual penetration that time by Maitland. Allowed Polk to finish at the rim. Nine point game. Pull up. Off the back of the iron. Just a little bit too hard for Lot. Maitland all the way. Puts it up and it's foul. He's going to the line for two. And so far tonight, he has been to the line three times. Three for three. He has eight points. Maitland the lefty that's the first miss at the line for him tonight but the 86 percent free throw shooter who's ranked third in the conference in that department. He has four assists to his credit he's averaging 4.4 per contest he makes the second. Eight point ball game, 63 55. He said three threes in a row for Raymond McVay Jr. And
And the lead is 11 once again for Howard University. And he comes in into this ball game shooting 25% from the three point line, and he's three for three tonight. 26 of 79 coming in. In fact, did not play the first time these two teams met. Had 13 points down in Daytona Beach when Howard traveled south. His season high is 14. And that was against two squads throughout the season. He's getting it done tonight off the bench. He certainly is. He has 11 points. Just three away from his season high of 14. He's been the catalyst in the second half. Really making three big threes. To squash the comeback by the Wildcats. And that's a mark of a good team when you right you've got your bench players coming in and doing the things right. that can continue to make you advance all the way across court to Maitland Maitland stops pops no good it's in the hands of Howard University and RJ Cole ball taken away almost a travel Pope goes it takes it into the corner back out to Maitland Maitland down the lane puts it up won't fall stolen away by RJ Cole right out of the hands of Pope RJ left-handed good big time play that time by the MEAC player of the year 13 point advantage for the Bison equaling their biggest lead of the night with three 20 to go inside Pope gets the feed and puts it in for two timeout but Bill Cookman Time out on the floor. 3.07 to go. Three oh six. That's the time remaining in this one. Our nightcap here at the Scope in Norfolk. Quarterfinal action of the MIAC. Winner advances to tomorrow's semifinals to take on the Spartans of Norfolk State, the number one seed coming in. Bethune came into today's game in the tournament as the number five seed, Howard, the number four seed. Should Howard be able to hold on, the top four seeds will be playing right. in the semifinals. And the dish off on the pass from Buffet to Charles C.J. Williams. And it's a 13 point lead once again. Well executed. Pope holding it high, looking for some help. Here's Maitland. Maitland will drive. Dishes it off. Pope short. And the rebound pulled down by Howard University. And it's CJ Williams with that rebound. Pope comes out. The offensive and defensive player of the year going against each other. It's kind of interesting them right. looking at each right. other there. <laughs> the game within the game. Finally got a little smile out of RJ Cole. He's talking to the coach. See, why you got the guy yeah, guarding can't guard me? me? Why, why do you have him guarding me? He talked to Ritter. <laughs> they got a laugh going over there. <laughs> kind of interesting. As we talked about the fact that Pope is six foot nine. RJ Cole six foot one. And Howard will inbound the ball. Two twenty to go. The layup no good and a foul will send Howard to the free throw line. 
And that foul is going to be whistled against Chantrez Davis. Jalen Jones going to the line for Howard University. First free throw attempt for him today. And doing pretty good. Actually, I'm sorry, I said first. That was his fourth, fourth free right. throw attempt. And he's actually shooting them pretty well tonight. He is. Short on that one. And Polk with the rebound. But the lead is 14, 71, 57. Long range three is good for Houston Smith. But at the other end, the little alley oop and the crowd pleaser, Chad Lott. 73 60 on the lob. Travel. So a turnover. So it, for all intents and purposes, it appears that we're going to have the top four seeds in the semifinals. Should make for two great games tomorrow. Norfolk State versus Howard coming off a loss by three points. Shout out the buzzer by R.J. Cole. And then the rivalry between a and and North Carolina Central a and having beaten the Eagles pretty handedly in the last game. So it should be a, a, a great semifinals for the MEAC tournament tomorrow here in Norfolk. So they're shooting one and one. C.J. Williams goes to the sideline right now. He looks a little bit unhappy about something. He got a little grin going. You don't have a whole lot of recovery time if you're the bison. <laughs> no, you don't. The front end of the one and one is missed that time by Bethay, who was hitting the threes earlier. Maitland three is good. Steal and a foul is going to be whistled by Jalen on with Jalen Jones. Ten point game still within reach. Both teams in the one and one. That's a two shot foul though. I believe right. this time will be. Ronnie Collins, for Collins, who went out about six minutes ago with cramps. He's a 73% free throw shooter. Now this is his first free throw attempt tonight. Stroke look, look good. Getting into single digits. Still time, a minute and 11 seconds left. Full court pressure or foul a person. Depending on how much homework you did, right. on who right. should you foul? Who should foul? Exactly. C.J. Williams is back in the ball game, and a pair of free throws made. Eight-point ball game with a minute eleven to go. Comes in. You don't want to foul him. <laughs> I was doing a good job of playing keep away. <laughs> Under a minute to go right now. And they will send Chad Scott Lott, rather, Chad Lott to the free throw line. Shooting 80, 68% from the field. Five fouls on Dia Katie. Davis picks up his fourth. Lott at the free throw line. He's one of two for the line tonight, two of three. So situational substitutions, what he did, he took right. CJ out on the defensive side of the ball, but brought him back Put in for the offense. Xavier in for defense now. Lead is 10 once again with 51 seconds to go. 
That's off the mark. And one. Scored a basket for Pope. Probably CJ will come back in and Xavier will come out. So, fouling out is Savior. Akwovo. He goes to the sideline with six points. He also grabbed five rebounds. And he fouled out with 43 seconds to go. Meanwhile, Pope. At the free throw line for Bethune, 15 points for him tonight. That was a two shot foul, wasn't it? Oh, he the, made the basket, right? He's shooting the other way. Yeah, he did. And he just missed that. That was a, that was a, you, exactly trying chance. to make it a three point play. Yes, sir. 75 67 lead is eight free throws coming from Chad Lott third team all conference selection Lot three for four at the line tonight 11 points for him RJ Cole leading all scorers with 23 points Lot misses the front end of the one and one still time Bethune not giving up here Maitland all the way Maitland throws it up and it's blocked. Blocked by Lott. Thirty-three seconds. The time remaining. Still an eight-point ball game. And Pope gets it inside and a timeout quickly called by Coach Ritter. Nice baseline out of bounds set. Just throw it over the top. Let Pope go get it. He did it. Now you you want to talk about who you can foul, but Coach Nickelberry has done an excellent job in putting five fairly decent free throw shooters on the court. So it's a six point ball game with 31 seconds to go. Timeouts. Possession arrow favors Bethune Cookman. Bethune with one timeout left. Howard with one. And the possession arrow favoring. Correction. The possession arrow favoring Howard. Yes, definitely. Well, it's hard to tell. Yeah, because that one says it's favoring Bethune. It is Bethune. Yeah. It is Bethune. I'm sorry. Favoring Bethune. So they foul Kyle Foster, sophomore from Hampton, Virginia. Really good shooter is, is Foster. Excellent three-point shooter. Has not been to the line tonight. He's over one from three-point range. First free throw attempt. But throughout the season. Shooting better than 75% at the line. Right around, right around 77. A little short. And the reason he's getting a second shot is because there's 10 team fouls exactly. on the two. 28 seconds remaining. Shot clock is off. Six point ball game. Second one is good. Seven point ball game. Oh, yes. Body's flying everywhere. Is he okay? Let's hope so. Yes, he's okay. He went right over top of Maitland. That was Chad Lott picking yes. up the foul. Yes. Maitland going to the line. A lot of bodies on the floor. They've been doing a lot of wiping today. <laughs> they have. They really. <laughs> yeah. We got at least 10 minutes in work for wiping, <laughs> floor mopping. <laughs> Maitland with 12 points. He's missed one free throw attempt tonight. Four of five at the free throw line. 
and he's a pretty good free throw shooter as I said he's third in the conference in that department trying to will his team and keep them alive still a lot of time as far as they're concerned 23 seconds and he will shoot two free throws. Coach Willard, really, it's I think, I, I, think, I think the wife of man is tired. <laughs> yeah. Said <laughs> somebody else do this. <laughs> but uh, Coach Ritter in his second year at Bethune has done an excellent job, but he's still is, seeking his first MEAC tournament win. If I remember yeah. correctly, they went out in the first round last That's year. Guess it ain't designed for that. He's got some athletes, though. Unusual miss for Maitland. Malik Maitland. Four of six at the line tonight. For the third best free throw shooter in the conference. Tough miss. Miss them, them both. both. That's going to go against Pope. <laughs> Manny up to give him the look. He hit him in the back with the ball. Manny's getting ready to toss him. <laughs> Manny say, I'm going to take these stripes off. <laughs> he said, I don't even need a whistle. <laughs> right, yeah. you. Apparently, you don't know who I am. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny. Where he looked at him, his Zion Cousins is at the free throw line. With 23 <laughs> seconds to go. Yeah, apparently you don't know who I am, young fella. <laughs> and he really wasn't trying to throw the yeah, ball at yeah, him. Yeah. He was just throwing yeah. it up there. And Manny just happened to be yeah. walking in front of it. But of course, you don't know. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, nine point ball game right now with 20 seconds to go. Maitland looking for some help. The spin down low, and it's going to be off the hands of Houston Smith. I think and it'll go back to Howard University with 15 seconds to go. I think you can call the dogs off now. <laughs> he don't know who you are. <laughs> I know. And the foul against Pope. The thing about Pope, he's a junior. Defensive player of the year. He'll be back next year. And he'll get a chance to face who? R.J. Cole, the <laughs> right. player of the year. At the free throw line is C.J. Williams. 11 seconds to go. C.J. with 16 points. One or two at the line tonight, two of three, 17 points for the junior from Richmond, Virginia. Young man who scored in double figures in all but two games for Coach Nickelberry and the Bison of Howard University this year. One or two players from this Howard team to make the all first team all conference selection. Howard setting up at a 2 2 1. Try to slow him up. Maitland dribbles, dribbles right through it. Maitland, long shot, no good. Pope down the lane. They let him go. Let him dunk it. And that's going to do it from the scope in Norfolk, Virginia. And Kevin Nickelberry's squad will move on to play tomorrow's semifinal game at 6 p.m. against the number one seed, the Spartans of Norfolk State. It's been a good day for both of these semi quarterfinal action contests here in the scope in Norfolk, Virginia. Kasai Alexander and the rest of us here in Norfolk at the MEAC tournament. Charlie Neal saying so long. Again, the final score, Howard University 80, the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats 71. Good night, everyone.